Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your 16th Angular 2 tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about routing. Alright, so currently if we type in a different URL into our address bar such as forward slash home or forward slash directory or forward slash whatever you want, then we're always going to get the same view in our browser. We're always going to get that default app.component view with the home component view embedded into it and it's not going to change. And that's because no routing has been set up in our application. So ideally what we want is if a user goes to just forward slash, then they get the home view. And if they go to forward slash directory, they get the directory view rendered in the browser. So that's what we're gonna do in this tutorial. And to do it, we're gonna to have to take two steps. First of all, we're gonna create a routes file and we're gonna define all of our routes within that file. Then we're gonna export them so that they can be loaded into the main.ts file where the application is bootstrapped. And then the second step is to tell Angular where to load in our components or views when a specific route is requested. For example, if I go to forward slash directory, then how does Angular know where to load in the directory view? We need to tell it that explicitly, so we're gonna do that as well. Okay then, so we're gonna set up two routes, one for the home page, which is just forward slash, and then one for the directory, which is gonna be forward slash directory. Now the home page has already got a view, this home component right here, but we're gonna need a view and a component for the directory. So we're gonna to have to generate one of those. Now you've seen me generate a component in the past by saying ng generate, oops, if I just click down here, ng generate components, and then the name of the component. But quicker, you can just say GC and then the name of the component. This is like a shortcut. So I'm gonna call this one directory. Make sure you're in the Ninja directory um, folder there. Press enter and then this is gonna spin up a new component for us and a folder for it right there as well. There we go. Okay, cool. So now we've got this directory and it's got a view and a TypeScript file and we're just going to delete this spec.ts file because we're not going to use that. Okay, cool. So now we've got that view sorted and that component. So what we need to do is set up our routing using those two steps. So the first step, like I say, was to create a route file. And we're going to do this in the app folder. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to new file. And I'm going to call this routes. Dot, sorry, I'm going to call this app.routes.ts. Okay, so now we can specify all of our routes in this file. Now to do that, I'm gonna store them in an array and this array is gonna be a constant. So I'll say const and the name of this array is gonna be app underscore routes. This is capitals because it's a constant and I'm gonna set this equal to an array and in the array is where we're gonna define these routes and each route is gonna be an object, just like that. And the first property of this object is gonna be the path and this is what the URL is gonna be, so forward slash whatever. So the first one is gonna be directory, meaning the user goes to forward slash directory. And then the second um, parameter is gonna be the component that loads in when a user goes to this. So the component we wanna load in when a user goes to forward slash directory is the directory component. So if we open that up, we can see it's called directory component right there. So we'll copy that and paste it right in there. And that's fine. Okay, so the second one is gonna be another object and the path this time is going to be empty, which means basically they're just gonna to go to forward slash, okay, the root level. And then the component is gonna be the home component, which is right here. So if we open up that file, you can see it's called home component right there, cool. Okay, so they're the only two routes we're gonna set up in this tutorial. But right here, we're using the directory component and the home component. So we have to import those at the top of this file. So we're now to do that. We just say import. And then in the curly braces, what do we want to uh, import? We want to import the directory component. And that is going to be from. And then it's going to be dot forward slash. Now we're currently in the app folder. So it's dot forward slash to say the current folder. Then it's in the directory folder. Then it's forward slash directory dot component. And that's gonna grab this thing right here, this file, okay? So that's where we're exporting from. 
Cool. So let's copy that dude and do the same thing for the home component. Just change this to home and this to home as well. And then finally this one as well. Okay, cool. Home component. So now we've imported both of those as well. But this isn't enough. All we've done is stored our routes in an array. What we need to do is export those routes so that we can use them in the main.ts file where we're gonna pass them to the bootstrap method. This thing here, okay? So what we'll do is come down here and we'll say export. And this is gonna be another constant and it's gonna be the app routes provider that we're gonna call it. And this is gonna be equal to an array as well. And in this array, it's just gonna be one method. It's gonna be the provide routes method. And then we're gonna pass in our routes, okay? So this is gonna provide our routes to Angular to use in the bootstrap method. So again, we need to import this right here. So it's not provide routes, it's provide router. Sorry, okay, so we need to import this now. So we'll say import provide router from, and then it's gonna be this time Angular and forward slash router. Okay, cool. So now we've set up this routes file and if you had more routes, all you do is just carry on making them right here. But we're just gonna set up those two for now. So we've created those routes and we're exporting this constant right here, which is providing our routes to bootstrap, okay? So now what we need to do is load those routes up in the main.ts file when the application starts, otherwise they won't work. So let's go to this file main.ts and the first thing that we need to do is import this thing right here that we just exported because we're going to use it so let's come under here and we'll say import and we're going to import this thing right here that we just pasted and it's going to be from and it's forward slash app and it's app dot routes okay and remember, we don't need to put .ts right there. It automatically works that out for us. So we can use this now in this file. And what we're going to do is pass it through as an argument in this bootstrap method. Now, when this bootstrap method is called, we can pass it a second argument here, which is an array. And we can kind of put our dependencies or services or whatever we want in here that it's going to use when the application loads. So what we're going to do is load in this thing right here. So We'll copy that again and paste it right down here. And now we can use those routes in this application. They're gonna get loaded up. So that's the first step taken care of. We've provided our routes in the routes file right here, and we've loaded them up when the application starts in this bootstrap method. So now Angular knows what routes to expect and what to load in um, when a certain route is requested, okay? But it still doesn't know where to load those components or views into the application when a route is requested. Where's it gonna view? Where's it gonna load them, okay? So right now, if we go into the app component view, which is the default view which loads up, right now in this section right here, we're just loading in the home component, right? All the time. Now we don't wanna do that. Instead, we wanna dynamically load in whatever route or component has been requested. So I'm gonna copy this dude out for now or comment it out rather. And then underneath, I'm gonna use a different directive. And this directive is called router-outlet. And this tells Angular that we want to load in the route or the component that we have requested right here. Okay, so now it's not always gonna load in the home component, it's gonna load in whatever component we've requested via the route. So I'll save that and we need to do one more thing. So this thing right here is a directive. And remember, if we use a directive, we have to tell the component itself that we're gonna use that directive right here. So what we need to do is import it and then specify it right here to say, look, you're gonna expect this router outlet. So all we need to do is come up here and we're gonna say import. And then the thing we wanna import is called router, all in capitals, and then underscore directives. And that is going to be from 
at angular forward slash router. And this is a bunch of directives that includes this router outlet one we just used, okay? Um, so Angular will recognize that now. So again, we just need to paste this thing down here as well. Let's just put a semicolon on there and paste it here. And now we can use that router outlet in this view right here. Okay, so now that's all set up. So that whenever we request a certain route, it's gonna expect it, but there currently is a little error. So let's just have a look what that is. Okay, and that's just a comma that it expects. I have a feeling I know what this is. It's that thing right there. I put a semicolon, I shouldn't do that because it's in an array, so that should be fine now. So if we come on over here and refresh. Okay, cool, so this is now loading in the home view. Okay, because this thing is loaded on the home. And if we go to forward slash directory, then it should take us to the directory view, which says something like directory works. Cool, there it is, a directory works. So now we have set up routing. We have the home and we have the directory. So any questions, leave those down below. Otherwise, I'm gonna see you in the very next tutorial.